It's the final day of the championship season and the Blades are in a party mood. Sheffield United uh, round off their promotion winning campaign in Birmingham this afternoon and they're looking to finish off the season in style. Kickoff is just under an hour away and for all the match pass information and broadcasting regulations for today's game, go to the website sufc.co.uk. A very good afternoon. Welcome inside our studio here in the heart of Bramall Lane. Birmingham is the destination for the Blades this afternoon. The final game of the promotion winning championship season and see if they can round it off in style with three more points. I'm delighted to be joined in the studio by former Blades captain and member of the promotion winning team in 0506, Chris Morgan. Good afternoon to you. Afternoon, Rich. And alongside you, as always, Ellie Wilson. Bring in the intellect, I like to think, on this show. <laughs> Great to see you too, Ellie. Thanks, Rich, likewise. Um, the compliments start the day. Must have been a good season after all. Um, let's look ahead to today's game because, they're, on the face of it, job's already done. But we spoke to Chris Heckingbottom, uh, and as we'll hear from uh, earlier in the week, and he already said plans are in place for the Premier League season, what they need to do in the off-season. You've been in this situation, Morgs. Um, what is the mindset? Do you think that far ahead right now? Um, yeah, I think I think the manager, the manager certainly will be. He'll be uh, he'll be after a budget. He'll be looking at players. He'll be thinking uh, when are we coming back in pre-season? Where are we going on pre-season tour? And what's the new kit look like? Uh, all that, you know. And, and and obviously the players, the players will want to finish off today on a high. They'll want to get three points. They'll want to get to that you know, magical 91 points, you know, get, get in there. Um, and then their focus then turns to uh, holidays, rest the body, rest the minds, and then look forward to uh, next season. It has been a memorable season, Ellie. Job done in terms of, of winning promotion. There is going to be a party atmosphere, certainly amongst the fans, if nothing else, down in Birmingham today. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, rightly so. It's been a fantastic season for the club, for the fans, everybody involved. The players as well, obviously Hecky, you know, you're always building yourself in your own career and, and I think in terms of today's game, the players have got that to play for as well. You know, it's, it's still another game, but it's another game to impress and, and something to build towards next season. So next season is obviously it's, it's just around the corner and it's massively exciting. And as Morg said, there's a lot to look forward to, but you've still got one more job to do first. And for a few of the players, uh, most notably, I guess, Billy Sharp, there, there are landmarks still out there to be achieved. We've gone on for the last few weeks now one goal shy of making 250 you know billy very well that will be on his mind won't it yeah it will yeah and he'll uh, it, it'll want to get that and he'll he'll be desperate to try and get that today you know so uh, i think i think it'd be a good game i think obviously last game of season it always has that party atmosphere as you've touched on with the supporters i'm sure they'll all be down there and fancy dress and things like that i were uh, in in a couple of train stations on saturday and loads of fans milling around going to all different games and, and you and you could see them so but yeah, Billy will be, he'll want that 250th goal. And there couldn't be a more fitting tribute to somebody who has been a cornerstone of everything that's been achieved at this club over the last five, six years. Yeah, 100%. He's, Billy Sharp is he's the guy, isn't he? You know, front man, leading from the front and captain is such a great captain, mm -hmm. so much experience and to be that close to such a fantastic milestone. I think any time he gets anywhere near the box, everyone's just rooting for him to put the ball in the back of the net and no, you know, no doubt that'll be on the back of his mind, but yeah, we'll see, see what happens. He's still got a lot to you know, be credited for in his career, even if he doesn't achieve that milestone anyway. He and the rest of us are certainly hoping he does make that landmark today. Let's take a look to see then if he is in the starting 11, because that has just dropped for today's game at Birmingham City. And the name of Billy Sharp is on the bench. Uh, there are five changes to the team that started that 1-0 defeat on Thursday night to Huddersfield Town. In goal, Adam Davis returns alongside him. Ender Stevens, John Fleck, Ollie McBurney, and Tommy Doyle making way. Sander Berger, Ollie Norwood. No place at all for Daniel Jebison. Wes Fodringman is on the bench. Max Lowe picked up a knock um, in that defeat on Thursday night. Any surprises, Morgs, that uh, the manager has made such changes? Um, no, because obviously there was there was a game on Thursday night, and I was actually at that game on Thursday. That was a that was a tough tough game uh, physically. You know, obviously it, it, all on it for Huddersfield. Huddersfield obviously needed a point, but ended up getting the win. So that that was a tough game. So I think what uh, Eki's done is he's he's juggled the pack, and you know there's 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 lads in there that are. They're trying to earn new contracts, you know. So again, we talk about the magnitude of the game today. 
it, it's big because people are they're, they're playing for the futures as daft as it sounds they, they want a new contract they want to be at Sheffield United in the Premier League and he's, he's put a few in today and uh, you know it's, it's their chance yeah that, that is one aspect of this that we haven't really touched upon um, in the midst of the euphoria of winning promotion the celebrations rightfully that, that have gone hand in hand with that there are careers still to, to be played for here. You know, everybody talks about the Premier League. You, you have to be part of the team to be in the Premier League, first of all. Yeah, for sure. I mean, any opportunity you get to step on the pitch and go and impress is an opportunity that as a player you need to take because you're right, it is your career in the longer, you know, when you're looking at the longer term picture. And if you're a younger player, you need to take that opportunity. You need to prove that actually, yeah, I can, I can make that jump. I can step up with the squad. Um, and then also just performing as you have done for the rest of the season. So there's no surprises really that there is a lot of rotation because it's also an opportunity for the manager to, to look at that and assess that from his point of view. Like he has to put a squad together for next season um, and no doubt all, everybody is going to want to be a part of that. So it's just him navigating how he's going to do that. Obviously see the changes in goal as well, giving Davo an opportunity. Um, so yeah, there's, there's shirts up for grabs and, and careers. Yeah, Father Time is the one person that remains undefeated in, in sport morgues. It comes to everybody at, at some point in their career, you included. I mean, is it something that at the time you were conscious of that it was going to be the last game in your last season? Uh, no, mine was out of my control because obviously I, uh, I, I did my knee at 33 and always thought that I'd get back and I'd, I'd play again. And then unfortunately, I, I never got that chance, you know. So, but lads who were fit and lads who were playing... Um, I had a conversation, we were talking about uh, Billy Shatter at the Preston game and somebody said to me, what do you think Billy will do? And I said, well, a lot of the times it, it, it depends on Billy, it depends how mm. Billy feels at 37. Does he get up in the morning, do, you know, does, do both ankles hurt, do his knees hurt, does his back... If not, I mean, he, he looks after himself, he's a fit lad, he's kept himself strong and if he still feels good in himself, then... He'll, he'll think he can play 38 games yeah. next season uh, mm -hmm. at 37. You know, I, I know he speaks to Jags quite often. You know, Jags still going at 40. I think Jags thought about retiring in the summer. He he wants to go again. You know, he, he wants he wants another season. So, you know, I think it comes down to the individuals on how they feel. I mean, obviously, Ali, it's something that is way off in the distance <laughs> for you, and that probably hasn't even crossed your mind. But in the dressing room, some of the more experienced members, is it open chat or is it something that's very individual and personal? I think it is very personal and individual. You know, as Morg said, I guess it depends how you feel. You know, can't obviously speak from experience at this point, <laughs> but you know, every player wants to carry on playing as long as you can. You know, even if that means dropping a league, if that means continuing and being more of a bench player and more of a character in the dressing room. There's different roles, and uh, you know, when you're a younger player, you tend to be that bench player learning, and then when you become a senior player, you're more of a leader, whether you're on the pitch or off it. So. I think it just depends how you feel it at that point in your career. You know, you may think I've had a great run here and my heart's here and, and I want to finish on a high and leave it at that. You know, it's a very personal decision. But equally, if you can play and you feel fit enough to continue playing the game, it's a game that we all love and I think you'd, you'd continue as long as you can do. Well, five changes to that starting eleven this afternoon. Uh, it'll come as no surprise that that doesn't alter the formation that we expect uh, Sheffield United to go into today's game with at Birmingham City. Uh, it's tried and tested, and it's won as promotion. Three at the back, uh, two holding in midfield as well. The, the names change, the formation doesn't, Morgs. No, I think that's uh, that's cast in stone now. I think that has been for for a while. You know, that's that's the formation. That's 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 the shape that the lads are, are well drilled in. They know it. Um, you know, obviously e Eki went back to that. You mm. know, when uh, when Slav left, obviously he tried more of a a four three three type. Uh, Eki went back. You know, and put you know round pegs in round holes uh, the lads the lads know it they know it inside out and I think that's that's been the key to, to the success but even the lads that have come in you know your Tommy Doyles McAtees they've they've fitted in they've fitted into that shape so and become essential parts uh, of the starting 11 yeah. as well one of those names mentioned obviously Tommy Doyle we learned last week at the player of the awards dinner he'd won the award for the goal of the season he's back in the starting 11 today and he caught up with us just before we went on air Tom first time playing at Birmingham yeah, yeah, it will be, yeah. So um, hopefully we can we can play well, get the three points. I'm looking forward to it. You know, it's a, obviously a more traditional stadium, so it'd be good, be good to play in front of the, the Blades fans again. Last time playing in front of the Blades fans, it's been a successful season personally and, and collectively, hasn't it? Yeah, I mean, I've said it loads of times that I've really... Um, so yeah, hopefully it'll be, be fitting today to, to get three points. Uh, and yeah, for, for the last time, hopefully we, we enjoy it. Pretty sure the Gaffer wants to finish on a high as well. Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. I think you know, even though promotion 
it's done. You know, if you lose, you know, it still leaves a little bit of a bitter taste in your mouth. So, you know, we want to finish with three points. Um, and then, yeah, it's the Premier League next season. Thanks, Paul. That's it. Thank you. Thanks, mate. Thanks to Tommy Doyle. Thanks for Kevin Cookson asking the questions there. And a reminder, it's the final time you can see the Blades in action this season. And you can do so with us live here on SUTV Live. Just go to the club's website, sufc.co.uk, and you'll find all the information you need right there on how to purchase your match day pass. On Tommy Doyle, Ellie, he's somebody that's grown in stature and grown in influence as the season's gone on. It's the point now where... If you're looking to put out Sheffield United's strongest team, he's one of the first names on it. Yeah, absolutely for me. I think he's been class. He, when he first came in, you know, himself and McAtee were kind of fighting for that sort of shirt within the midfield unit. And I think that they've grown and developed as players. Physically, they've stepped up and they're now, they've now proved themselves to be players that you need to have in that starting team. And that they should be, you know, they, they are really important roles within that. And I think that's credit to how they've sort of applied themselves and obviously to Hecky to be working with them and, and to continue their professional and personal development because they seem to have just gone from strength to strength since they have come in and they, they seem to be enjoying it as well. You know, when you're enjoying your football, you're going to play your best football, which is really great to see. When he arrived here on loan, Morgs, he came um, with a shining endorsement from, from Pep at Manchester City. Mm. It's one thing, though, to, to leave a Premier League club and go up through the ranks. It's another to prove yourself in a competitive environment in a league like the Championship. And it's to his great credit that that's what he's done. I think, to be fair to him, you know, like his, his first loan at Cardiff, uh, I think that possibly set it up then for, for the next level to come here, you know, because it was a promotion push, you know, on the back of last season, losing in the playoffs, anybody that was coming in was coming in to be a part of a, a promotion push. So again, he's, he's had that little bit of a bedding in period at Cardiff, had that and then sort of gone on. Uh, I think the, the biggest compliment I can give him is he now looks like a Sheffield United mm -hmm. player. You know, he's, he, he's, I've seen lots of him, lots of him in, in Man City's under-21s team. And he's, he's combative, loves a tackle. You know, he's a, he's a typical lad from Manchester. He's, he's, he's got a guy that, you'd have loved to play alongside, isn't he? 100%, yeah. yeah. He, he, technically, he's good. You know, he's ball striking, he's set plays. But I just think his, his mentality, the way he's approached it, and he, he, he's not come in and played like a lone player. He's come in and played like a Sheffield United player. And uh, I think that was, that was the difference with... Uh, with Maka, it, it was his first loan, and it's a big change. It's a big change coming from development football to playing, particularly at Bramall Lane, expectancy. But but both of them have, have, have grown and uh, both been huge parts of, of the promotion team. It'd be interesting next season whether you know whether Man City will allow both of them to to come and play in the Premier League. Well, essentially, that's part of the the talking negotiation that has to go on in, in the off season, isn't it? All will be revealed in due course, no doubt. So, Tommy Doyle returns to the starting lineup this afternoon. He wasn't starting on Thursday night in a big game for Huddersfield Town, a game which ultimately they managed to get the better of Sheffield United in. Huddersfield, of course, in the blue and white striped shirts as this game gets underway. Playoff by Jefferson and now Illiman and Jai for United. Gets it back from Jefferson. Jai's going to go for goal himself. Laura is looking book. ball, Daniel Jefferson through on goal for United. And Nichols stands up to make the save. In from Norwood. There's John Egan into a dangerous area, but the referee has blown. Ball that's gone away here. Tees up a decent oh. ball, that was another good chance for Daniel Jefferson. United looking for the opening, Berg is going all the way to the byline here. It's a dangerous ball in! Oh. Find half a yard for a strike, he lays it off his turn for Berger who does hit one. United will be shooting towards the away supporters in the second half. He's a delivery and there's a chance, oh. and I think it was Huddersfield's own player who blocked it. Pearson's head out. Ward's turned his man. What oh, a strike! Oh Danny Ward! Huddersfield take the lead and it's a peach of a hit from Danny Ward. George Baldock. Lifts it into a dangerous position. Can United create a grandstand finish here. Mm. Plenty of jostling in there. And the delivery isn't the best. Conflict makes something of it. Away from Coroma. It's a bit of support. Hold up. Lots of room here for Doyle. 
There's the full-time whistle. He's done it again, Neil Warnock. Another great escape. I hope with Ronnie Jepson. Danny Ward, the hero for Huddersfield Town. So ultimately, defeat, 1-0 win for Huddersfield Town, a win which ensured their survival in the Championship for next season. Clearly delight for former Blades manager Neil Warnock, but for our manager, Paul Heckingbottom, it was a night of mixed emotions. There's part of me like fuming about the game and loads of things I didn't want to see, but it's tough to make negative judgments on the players at this moment. Um, but it's easy to make positive ones, like I said, like with Preston. So, because there is a reason we pass the ball well, we ran about, we pass the ball well. But the moment that Huddersfield play with the edge that they needed to play with to uh, um, to get what they're fighting for, you could see the difference. Then, do you know what I mean? You could see the difference in the two teams, and and that 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 was it. That's the, defined the result. Max Lowe, what happened there? It's his calf. Yeah, so we're not taking any risks, and so we'll we'll leave him out. Obviously, Ender was there; he's ready now. But for him to come on and do well, it would have been with the extra time, 90 minutes virtually. He's too much, so we was always going to take him off again and make sure we've got him available for for Monday. So attention very quickly turns from Thursday night to this afternoon and the Championship season finale at Birmingham. And a reminder, you can see all the action with us from St Andrews this afternoon on SUTV Live. Just go to the club website and you can find all the information you need right there to purchase your match day pass. Chris Morgan, um, that defeat at Huddersfield, strange sort of game because it didn't really kick into life until the second half. No, it, um, I was actually at the game and... Young Jebo had two fantastic chances and, you know, you, you think at least one of them, he'd stick them away and you could see that Huddersfield had rode the luck a little bit. Um, and then, yes, second half, I thought Huddersfield came out and were really at it. And uh, they, they, they've been doing a man-for-man -man type approach to games since Neil went back in and they, they, were, they were all over us. They, they literally did swamp us. They put on... Uh, put us under a lot oh, of pressure. On that, you know Neil Warnock very well. You played under him yeah. dur during your career. We've already said, you know, it'll have meant a, a lot to him. Do you think at half-time he got into those players? <laughs> do I think? <laughs> or, or do I know that he got into them? <laughs> yeah, he definitely got into them. They, they, they were fighting for their lives, Rich, you know, and they, they did. They rode the look a little bit first half, but I think second half, they, they, they deserved the win in the end, I thought. Great goal from Danny Ward. It was an opportunity, Ellie, for... So some of the players in the Sheffield United squad to, to stake a claim with next season in mind. Do you think some did that? Do you think it was an opportunity missed for others? I think it's a difficult position to be in when you have already secured promotion because naturally I think there's a bit of a deflated vibe across the camp in the, in the sense that you don't have that to play for whereas when the opposition that you're playing against is fighting for everything that can add a different dynamic to the game so you know individuals will have approached that game differently but you know, youngsters stepping into into other um, shirts have, will need to take those opportunities. And as you mentioned, Jebson, you know, he's been he's been decent across the season. And those sort of the fine margins between being a starting player, not being a starting player, getting your contracts, not not as that cutthroat <laughs> for that one yeah. game. But you know, like in terms of performance, they are opportunities. But so. that's the business we're in at the moment, yeah. isn't it? You know, it, you've got to take an opportunity as and when it arises. Yeah, for sure. And I think today is another one of those. So there's a lot of rotation within the squad that we've seen that Hecky's put out today. And, and no doubt that the players will be aware of that because if you've taken your foot off the gas in the first half against Huddersfield, that's something that they will want to address. And they, they'll want to finish on a high as well. They've had a great season. I know it's the last game of the season, but some, some of those players there may not be in a blade shirt. It may be the last time certain people in the group are together. And for that reason alone, you want to go out on a high and you want to play and you want to enjoy it and come away from that game with three points. Yeah, I suppose that's the truth of the matter, Morgs, isn't it? You know, no matter what happens this summer, for this group of players, it is the last time they're going to be together. No matter, it's the nature of the business. There will be changes. Yeah, yeah, there, there will be. And you know, going back to the strikers, the first, the first thing that managers when they get promoted, where they, they look to strengthen, is at the top of the pitch. Strikers in the Premier League, and you know, that's that's what Eki will be looking at. I know. He thinks an hell of a lot of young Will Asula as well as Jebo. Will might get an opportunity today in terms of can these lads, can, can it save him £10 million mm. on a new striker? You know, and, that's, and that, I'm sure that's what the staff will be saying. Lads, there's opportunities there. If you want them, grab them and, and, and save us having to go in the transfer market. Because they, they have got a good squad. But, but you're right, I think um, ev everything sort of comes to an end. Mm. And 
lads who've been big part of this football club. You know, Chris. Chris will have been the one who brought the majority in, but if you come to the end of this season, there's just that many out of contract. And I think the laws of averages say that all them players are, are, are not going to be offered a new deal. I mean, I, I might be wrong, but you know, I'm, I'm sure that they'll be looking to, uh, to tweak the squad. So it, it, it's all then managing budgets. Yeah, for sure. OK, let's take a look then at the league table coming into the final round of matches this afternoon. Uh, Great sight for Sheffield United there. The P already by their names, promoted to the Premier League. The real battle immediately below them uh, for those final two playoff spots. Any one of five teams, mathematically at least, could claim them from Coventry, Millwall, Sunderland, West Brom and Blackburn. Uh, we mentioned it right at the top of the show. Your promotion winning team in 05-06, Chris, made it to 90 points. A victory for the Blades today, and they could surpass that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just thought I'd drop yeah, that yeah, in. Yeah, 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 yeah. And do you know what? It's obviously you'd like to think that th this team wouldn't get more points. That, but you know, it, it, we want them yeah. to do. We want them to go down there and and, and win. At the end of the day, both both of them teams in the same football club have got promoted. So it doesn't matter whether you go up with 100 points or 85 points. As, as, as long as you go up, you've done the job, haven't you? What I can say to make you feel a bit better is that 11 defeats for the Blazers this season, your team only had eight. eight. Obviously stronger defensively, Morgs. A lot stronger. <laughs> of course we were. <laughs> um, let's take a look at Sheffield United's form over the last few games coming into uh, this match. No surprise at all. They've finished the season like an absolute train to win automatic promotion. Just that one defeat in the last five coming at Huddersfield. But, you know, we, we joked about the defensive record. I mean, you look at that. That, that is promotion winning form right there. Yeah. And, and again, you know, the, the team's being built on a solid base. Mm. You know, they, they go from that, you know, the goalkeeper, the back three, the wing backs doing the job. And teams that go up in general keep clean sheets mm. that, that they're hard to score against. Uh, but also, they've, they've been good going forward. Really good. Um, but, um, yeah, I, you look at that, and I, I think that the Huddersfield game was just... It was just one of... It, yeah. it was a blip. I was here against Preston as well. You know, obviously, they, they, they blew Preston away, and everybody's walking to the ground, and people are like, oh, what are they going to be like today? And I think it comes to professionalism. You know, the bits that, that you were on uh, talking about, Ellie, in terms of, yeah, you're up, the job's done, but then it's, it's also that professionalism. Mm. And... You, you do na naturally, when, when, you, when you've achieved promotion and the job's done, I think naturally you come off it, you do, mm -hmm. because you've been at it full tilt for so long. Yeah. You know, and, <clears throat> but it is the professionalism. You, you're not then going into a game thinking, oh, I'm not going to tackle today because I don't want to get injured. And you, You're a professional sportsman, so you still go out there to win. But that level of intensity does come off a little bit. Well, and when you talk about professionalism as well, you're talking about the entire squad over the course of the season. And for much of this season, we've talked about the form of players like NL Amahodic, um, Illiman and Jai, uh, McAtee, Doyle, so on. But you go right back to the start of the season, Ellie. Players like Reese Norrington Davis, for example. How big a part has somebody like him, him he played, given that, you know, he was always seen as a left back, left wing back? And, asked to play a new role uh, and he excelled until he was injured in the first half of the season. Yeah, I remember watching a lot of the games early on and he was solid, you know, he was absolutely class and really had cemented his role within that unit and unfortunately, you know, things happen, injuries and Robbo's uh, Rob obviously come in and done a job but it is important to remember that players, everybody in that squad has played their part at one point or another throughout the season and there's a, lot, a big period where we did have a lot of injuries. We were fielding a very, very young team with a lot of inexperience. And the lads that, that came on still stepped up and, and performed and, and played their part within that section of the season. So it really is a collective effort. And that's credit to the, credit to the group and also the management for keeping everybody on the same page. Because when you're not playing, it's difficult. You know, it's difficult to stay switched on. But everyone seems to have done, th done that well. Yeah, we've seen footage of, of Reese there, Morgs. I, mean, I can remember at the start of the season, seeing his name as part of a back three and raising an eyebrow and thinking, well... Has he got in, it, in him to do this? But what he did give the team were, was pace to cover around the back as well. And he seemed to fit in very naturally. Yeah. I think the one thing with Reese is he's a very, very fit lad. Mm. And I think the wing back position suits him. Um, but also when he, when he stepped back and played the left hand side of a three, it was a little bit more like playing as an orthodox left back, which potentially suits him better. Mm. But like I say, even from that outside centre back position, you can still, you know, sort of rampage forward. And and he did that. And and I thought he was doing 
I, I thought he was excellent. He really, you know, he filled that gap. There was there was injury problems there, and like you said, you know, it was a bit of a surprise when when he was first put there. But um, he excelled, and then obviously uh, ended up with with that bad hamstring injury, didn't he? Yeah, we, we heard Ellie there mention Jack Robinson's name. He would, you know, get basically him or Kieran Clark that that missed out due to Reese's good form. When Reese got injured, it was Jack Robinson that grasped the nettle and has, has run with it in the second half of the season. Defensively, he's been solid. He scored goals with his head. He's got that mammoth long throw as well as we're, we're seeing here. He, again, he's given an added dimension to this team, Ali. Yeah, he's one player I've absolutely loved watching each game because I just think he's, he's solid. You know, he throws his, his body at absolutely everything, as you see there. Like, and he wants to score goals. He puts crunching tackles in. He's just one of those players that you can trust as well mm. in your back line, which is important because that's, like Morg said, that's the basis of your team. That's your foundation that you can then build to go forward. But... You know, he's so passionate when he plays and I think that you can see that which is important. Yeah, and in games that sometimes where it's been tight and especially here at Bramall Lane the crowd might, might start getting edgy that one person with, with a big tackle a hard fair tackle mm. can, can raise everyone Jack Robinson's got that in his locker. It's funny, all them nice things that Ellie just said, <laughs> said there, because it set, it set me up nice, because a, a pal of mine who's been a season ticket holder for years, even, even before we became friends, we became friends when uh, I, I moved near him, and he actually says, Jack Robinson is just, he says, Morgs is you with a left foot and a bit quicker. <laughs> I was like, what do you mean a bit quicker? But I, I, I think he's done great. I, I love watching Jack. Uh, I love the way he attacks set players. Mm. You know, obviously, when he's not throwing them in himself, the way he attacks it, he, he's, he's proper, proper old school. And if he, listen, if, if he listens this back, I, I, I hope that he doesn't take that as a... Not as a compliment, because I, I mean it as a compliment. The way he literally heads the ball as though he wants to put his eyes through the ball. He's, he's a proper, proper defender, you know, but, uh, but also modern. You know, he, mm. he, he can use the ball. I like him that he keeps things simple as well. Some, sometimes defenders these days get a little bit, you know, a bit overexcited where he, he knows. He knows when it's got to go long and he knows when he can play, but he's... He's, he, yeah, he's, he's, a, he's a proper, proper defender, I think. Well, we've shone the light on, on two defenders there. Um, if you're going to be tight defensively, it starts with the man between the sticks, doesn't it? And, and Wes Fodringham has been outstanding for pretty much all the season. You know? Davies comes in to, to start today and Wes gets a, re a rest on the bench. But it, it's not just the saves he's made, it's the times in games when he's made those saves. Yeah, I, do you know what I like about Wes? And I, I remember... Wes, Wes was in that real good Swindon team that Mark Cooper had and he's, he's excellent with his feet he, he really is excellent with his feet he, he used to we used to do um, we used to do the, the prep on, on stopping him mm. he, was, he was that influential he, he used to drop balls in left right and centre see that will surprise people because you know he had a time at Rangers before he came here when he came here he wasn't the number one keeper no so the fact you're talking about a different time when you prepped specifically for him might mm. raise a few eyebrows but, he's, but, but I like his calmness as well you know, he's, he's, not a, he's not a flappy keeper. You see a lot of keepers now, again, you know, getting overexcited. He comes, he claims things, and just, just, just the way he is with a back four, everything always seems at ease, and you can, you can tell the lads trust him. Uh, but again, being excellent. Yeah, I think that's important, though, for your back four, three, five, whatever it is you're playing, is you've got that cool, calm head behind you and also someone that you know can do the job. You know, he's, he's absolutely quality. He comes out, makes the right saves at the right moments. And even games where there's not been a lot for United to deal with defensively, he's still had one or two moments where he's been called upon and he's delivered. And, and that's so important because you, you just know that he's there as your, as your last line of defence. And I think whilst we're talking about unsung heroes, I want to mention the name of... Ollie Norwood as well, because in the last couple of months, a lot of the chat has been about the form of Tommy Doyle and James McAtee. But for the first six months at least of this season, I think rightfully so as well, as we're watching some footage of Ollie in action here, we were talking about Ollie Norwood not just being the best mid midfielder in this team, but in the division. Yeah, for sure. You know, he's another player with a lot of experience, but he's got an awful lot of quality mm. as well. And I think the way um, Doyle's kind of come in, it's almost like he's been a bit of an understudy and, and learnt that sort of role. You know, like Doyle reminds me almost of a young Ollie Norwood in some respects because the way he's been playing. And yeah, I just think Ollie's had such an instrumental role throughout a lot of the, a lot of the, um, the season. He'd even mentioned that he probably thought he was playing his best football at one time, which is, is fantastic. And 
if he's enjoying it, then even better. But, you know, he could switch the ball from left to right, absolutely pinpoint, and he just has that one pass that can cut through a defence. And you know he can sit in front of the back line and do the defensive role as well. So it's just absolutely perfect for number four. What, what's that, that saying? If you can keep your head whilst all around, the, you are losing theirs. Well, that's what Ollie Norwood's made a career of. Yeah, just valuable experience. You know, the ability in there, he spots a pass, as Ellie says, you know, his set, his set play deliveries, again, excellent. And it, it's true, it does all the things that we've just said about Tommy, we, we, we're saying about Ollie Norwood. Uh, but again, being a, a, a pivotal part of this football club for the last, what, five, five seasons, a, a, a big, big player. And, you know, played a, played a big part this season. Well, we're acknowledging some of the standout performance of this season here on SUTV Live. Uh, last weekend... The club as a whole came together to acknowledge what was deemed the players of the year. If you're with us on Thursday night, you saw us shine a spotlight on Illiman and Jai, James McAtee and Tommy Doyle. Well, there are a few other winners as well. The evening's awards began with the Community Player of the Year Award. And it was won by a man who's led by example this season in the heart of the Blades' defence. The winner was John Egan. That's brilliant, um, you know, to, to go into the community and, and do stuff for the club is brilliant and it's good to meet people around the community and I'm delighted with the award. Even during the week, you go into a coffee shop, um, you know, you're meeting fans and, you know, they're normal people, they just want to have a normal conversation and, yeah, it's brilliant. The fans are absolutely on top of the world and, you know, who can blame them? We're all, we're all the same, we're all delighted and just trying to enjoy it. You have to take the success when it comes to you. Uh, we all know football. It's not often uh, that you, you know, have successful seasons, um, especially as successful as this one, uh, getting to an FA Cup semi-final and getting promoted. It doesn't happen every year, so you have to enjoy it all. Um, you know, enjoy the ride and, and keep enjoying it. This season's Women's Player of the Year, Charlotte Newsom. This is a proud moment for myself and it's an honour to win this award after what's been an unsettled season, I'd say, for the women's team, obviously. We've had three different managers within the season, but I think all the girls have stuck together and all the girls and the staff deserve the credit that we've been given because at times it has been tough. I've played every minute of every game so far, so I think that's testament to myself but for all the hard work i put in through my injury and I think I'm really proud of how, how much I've come on this season. But like I said, we've stuck together and we've competed against full-time teams when we're only a part-time team ourselves. So yeah, it's a great honour to win this award but I'd like to thank my teammates and the staff for all their hard work. Congratulations to John Egan, Charlotte Newsom, and all the awards winners on the night. A fantastic occasion, a full house at City Hall as well, to celebrate what's been a magnificent season for Sheffield United. But on Charlotte Newsom, there, Ellie, you play alongside her week in, week out. She's overcome a lot of adversity to, to get to where she is now and deservedly won that award. Yeah, she's been cast this season for us as well. She mentioned there, like, I saw a graphic, she's one of 10 players across the WSL and the Championship that's played every single game this season, every minute of it. And she's just been solid, whether she's played in the centre, like central defence, or whether she's been at right back as well, left back. And again, just another player that you can rely on. She's a fantastic teammate, great person. And, you know, just credit to her. Like, there's not a better person that could have won that award, I don't think. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know too well, Morgs, that the end of season awards night is always a good night to be enjoyed when you reflect on the season it's a lot better when you've just won promotion oh yeah yeah <laughs> I remember we, we had ours I think we had it out on here there was a big marquee and uh, we ended up on the stage the old sweet Caroline and all <laughs> just they're, they're different they are such the end of season dinner is, is always a, a nice reflection mm. on the season but like you say when, when you've promoted and everybody's in, uh, in party mode it's, it is good well, it's certainly going to be in party mode for the fans, if nothing else, down at St Andrews today, because there is one more game left in the championship season. Uh, when these two sides met at Bramall Lane, though, early this year, it was a tight, tense affair. We're going to get us underway. The former chef of the United striker, Scott Hogan. Norrington Davis. Kadra. And goes the cross. So awkward as well for Birmingham to deal with. United keeping up the pressure. Berger fired in there into the hands of John Rudy. Doyle's cross, a deep one. It's hit the top of the bar. Back with Kadra once more. First time cross from Norwood. Flicked on by McBurney. Retrieved by Baldock. Berger. Lovely first touch. Berger strike. Ooh. Here comes a free kick from Ollie Norwood. Towards Egan who connects. Basham on the outside, here's Chris Basham, pulls it back for Baldock, oh. really good block. It's United who will get us underway, 
And here's Oli Nord who sends one into the Birmingham half. Lovely play by United. Nord at the heart of it once again. Kadra now finding Chris Basham. Basham gets his head up. Three in the box for the Blades. There's Njai with the header. Will be Nord to deliver. Might go all the way yes. through. And the strike is a brilliant one. And it's only McBurney. Quick as a flash, she rifles it into the corner. Wonderful strike from McBurney. His goal run continues, and Sheffield United have broken the deadlock. In goes the cross. And Deeney and Mark, real chance, and Deeney scores. Birmingham are level. It flicked off a United head, and Troy Deeney was there. The Birmingham skipper. It's his first goal of the season, and Birmingham City have levelled. And Boga will bring it forward. Look at him. And he's oh, found Rian Brewster, and Brewster takes it early. Sharp makes a break. He looks for Billy Sharp. Billy Sharp for United. Oh, saved God. by Ruddy. Troy Deeney spoiling the party at Bramall Lane back in October. 1-1, that game finished. What will be the outcome this afternoon? Well, you can find out with unrivaled coverage with us here on SUTV Live. To find all the information on how to purchase your match day pass, go to the club's website, sufc.co.uk. And the action doesn't finish with the final game of the season because we will be bringing you Sheffield United's promotion parade, which is this Thursday. Uh, it gets underway with the open top bus leaving uh, Bramall Lane at 5.30. It'll wind its way through Sheffield City Centre before arriving at the Town Hall. We hope it'll get there by 6.30, but these timings, as always, are fluid. Um, we will bring you all of the coverage of the promotion parade, a big celebration of a fantastic season for Paul Heckingbottom's side. Join us on Thursday afternoon right here on SUTV Live. OK, let's take a look then at Sheffield United's team for today's game. If you missed it with us a little bit earlier, here it is once again. Five changes to the team that started Thursday's 1-0 defeat at Huddersfield. Uh, Wes Fodringham drops down to the bench, as does Sander Berger. Uh, Ollie Norwood as well. Willa Sula is on the bench, as is 21-year-old. Um, Gigi uh, Gili Biyabu, I hope I pronounced that right, still waiting to make his first team debut. Will he get an opportunity this afternoon? Chris Morgan, we said right at the top, um, was there a surprise that be five changes, but it's an opportunity for everybody that's out there. Yeah, it is an opportunity. I think that's what it is. Fre fresh freshen it up, uh, go down to St Andrews, go and be competitive. You know, they're a, they're a typical championship team, uh, you know, sort of well set up, well drilled. Uh, obviously got good players within that which, which we'll come on to later on um, but yeah from our point of view you know you've, you've got the shirt today go and uh, go and show us how good you are it's, it, it's that what I am yeah, yeah, it's it, exactly um, I don't want to pour water on, on this by suggesting it's not going to be the most entertaining game of the season but three of the last five encounters between these two sides have ended in draws if that needs to be the case today let's hope it's a high scoring one um, let's take a look at Birmingham City's form over the last five games because they were looking over their shoulders for a little while they're safe now um, but when you look at that run of form over the last five games Ellie perhaps no surprise they found themselves in the bottom half of the table yeah, I mean, we've said all along it's consistency in this league that counts. And you, know, you've got, you can see on the graphic there, one win from the last five um, and a draw as well. But yeah, it'll be interesting to see how they approach this game. Obviously, they are now secure and they're safe. So do you use this game as an opportunity as, as Sheffield United are? Do you try and build on next season? Do you try to put sort of foundations in place? Um, but yeah, you know, that kind of reflects where they are at this moment in time. They have had their issues on and off the field over the course of this season. Uh, perhaps some good news for them this morning came with uh, the announcement that, in principle at least, a uh, takeover for the club has been agreed, subject to ratification from the EFL and the potential new owner uh, passing the fit and proper owner's test. Let's take a look at their starting 11 for today's game. And perhaps with that news in mind, Chris Morgan, these players do have something to play for. They also make five changes. Out go Roberts, Long, Colin, James and Chong. In to replace them come Sanderson, Dean, Longello, Bakuna and Graham. Yeah, again, same for them. You know, they've got new owners coming in, new owners, new budgets, 
manager wanting to make improvements. So again, from their point of view, end, end of season, last game, potentially new owner sat at St Andrews in the director's box watching. So again, it's, it's, it's a little bit of a trial game for them. Uh, you know, I think in their team, you look at Lukas Jukovic, uh, Rida Kadra in particular, you know, the, the front two, a uh, little bit of a sort of big man, little man combination, obviously big, big Lucas, target man, or put himself around, he, you know, he comes into him physically strong. Uh, and then obviously Rida Kadra, who, who we had down at the lane early on in the season. So, you know, no doubt he'll be, um, he'll, he'll, he'll have extra, uh, what, what's the word I'm looking for? He'll, well, incentive. He'll, incentive, yeah. Gr- great word, Rich, thank you. <laughs> that, yeah, so he'll, he'll be looking to stick yeah. one in the net today, you know, so, uh, but he, I think he's done well for them since he's been there. Elliot, it's the fourth consecutive season where Birmingham City have finished the campaign with at least 20 defeats. Um, they're one of very few teams, a select band, that have gone through that and still not got relegated. In fact, there's only been two of the sides that have that. Well, it's not really an accolade, is it? Certainly. Um, but it, it probably epitomises, in a nutshell, why they've been struggling and, and also reflects the turbulence that's been going off the field as well. Yeah, for sure. Sometimes, you know, as you mentioned, the off-field stuff can affect the on-field stuff. And as a player your job is to remain professional throughout that and you know go out and do the job and, and get points on the board but for various reasons they've obviously not managed to do that and the fact they've managed to survive when you you are getting as many losses or poor results as they have done is it's, it's quite impressive really <laughs> but, yeah. well it's credit to the players isn't it let's be honest because yeah. it, it's hard enough trying to focus on your job as it is when there's so much being said in the media you know is going off um, off the field and is affecting potentially your career to be able to to still uh, manage the focus at hand and keep your championship status it is to their credit it is to their credit yeah I, I, but I, I always think as a player you have to concentrate on the stuff that you can affect mm. and the stuff you can affect is on the training ground and, and, and on the pitch on a Saturday afternoon Tuesday night whatever you know the stuff in the background yes it affects contractual stuff mm. it affects if you know if, if that takeover hadn't have come through and these lads out of contract you know what what situation would they have been in would it have been a case of you know sorry lads we've, we've not got a new backer in we're going to have to let you go so obviously it's in the back of your mind but I also think then if um, if you're playing well and you are you are out of contract then well uh, th- this is the potential new owner uh, just had a few shots there um, so he's obviously feeling quite confident of going through the, the paperwork and completing the takeover of the club. And that has to be a positive sign if you're part of Birmingham City. Definitely. You know, because Birmingham City, let's face it, is a, is a big club in the championship. And uh, I think if they get things right there, they'll be uh, certainly a club that can be challenging for promotion. I think you just want that security, don't you, as a player and as a club. And once that, all them sort of things are, are solved off the pitch, then it gives everybody a bit of a... A bit of a breather, if you like, to be able to just go and focus on your job in hand. Because, as Morg said, you've you've still got to be playing well regardless. You know, you can't you can't be too worried about the contractual stuff because, at the end of the day, whether you're in contract, out of contract, if you've been playing well, you shouldn't really have too much to worry about. Well, let's take a, a quick look at some potential threats for Sheffield United today. Chris Morgan's already mentioned the one name that leaps out at us being Reda Kadra because he spent the first half of the season on loan here at Sheffield United. Uh, never quite found the former scale, the heights, Ellie, that he did when he was on Blackburn, at Blackburn the year before. Yeah, I think he just sort of struggled to get game time and when you're in and out, it can be quite difficult to get any consistency and he was often playing out you know, on the left and there was a lot of competition for shirts. You know, when you've got stronger, strong players in McBurney and Njai and things like that it is difficult because they were very much in form I think McBurney was on he was scoring almost every game at, at that sort of time around Christmas and it can be difficult to get a foothold in it but you know he he came in when he had opportunities he got some you know he got a goal and things like that and sometimes it just doesn't work out but you know credit to him he can just sort of push on and and find form elsewhere well, he lines up against the Blades this afternoon at St Andrews. We're just 15 minutes away from kickoff here on SUTV Live, a match you can see with us. Just go to sufc.co.uk and you'll find all the information you need there on how to purchase your match day pass. Uh, let's focus a little bit longer on Sheffield United now and April's Player of the Month, which was Sander Berger, integral to the victories and run of success that brought us promotion, and he reflects with us this week on what has been a busy few weeks. Uh, Sander, what a month. Um, trip to Wembley, automatic promotion to the Premier League. Where, where do we start? <laughs> no, it's been an unbelievable month uh, for everyone involved in uh, the Sheffield United family. Um, 
obviously uh, started off with a crucial win. That was probably a little bit earlier, obviously, but when we turned things around a little bit at Sunderland away, and since then, since then we haven't really looked back. You know, we we just kept on winning. You know, we've been strong home and away, and uh, important wins all the time. And even the cup run was unbelievable. And then uh, get to Wembley, you know, play Man City, and then uh, three four days later the promotion at Premier League. Uh, couldn't ask for more. And uh, yeah, it's been a fantastic month and a fantastic last few weeks. And an incredible end to season for you personally. Two assists against Cardiff. Um, influential in a lot of those crucial games late on in the season. So, how would you assess your end of the year? Yeah, it's been good. Like the the rest of the team, obviously, we've been uh, when the pressure has been there. I think we all stood up, you know, and performed and uh, embraced the challenges, and uh, that's been key, you know, because uh, the end of the season. I mean, we obviously have been good throughout the season. It, it's a marathon, but uh, it's really important to step up. Uh, when it uh, gets that close to the finish line, I think we're all done as as a group, you know, and everyone uh, uh, contributed with uh, big performances, and uh, you know we had a strong squad uh, throughout the whole time, and uh, yeah, so it's uh, it's a great group to be a part of. I suppose the, the, probably the best bit of that for you, the, the goal against West Brom at Bramall Lane. Just just talk us through, obviously, once you've scored that, we've seen the pictures, mm. we've seen the video, but what it meant to to you and what it meant to the fans, and, and just what a moment that was. Yeah, it was. Um, yeah, I can't really explain how that feel. You know, uh, understood early that Illiman obviously would have uh, would would turn him, uh, and then I knew like Illiman will see this pass, and then you know I was almost waiting for the, the ball just to get to my foot and then get it in, and then you know almost <laughs> celebrating b- before I even got it. But uh, yeah, it was uh, fantastic. You know, in front of the cup, uh, just a special, special moment, and yeah, it's just like. Yeah, it's, it's still to this day probably you don't, you don't feel like it's it's actually happened, but uh, yeah, it's great to look back at it, and it's uh, it was a special moment which I will always remember for sure. And just finally, um, the different players won won this award every single month this season. So what what does that say about about the squad here? Oh, it says a lot about the group. You know, uh, we had our injuries uh, all year, uh, but you know everyone has stepped up, uh, played a big big part. Uh, you know, influence the team in a very positive way. Uh, tough in training, you know, uh, competitive. Everyone wants to, everyone wants to play, and uh, you can tell that because everyone has stepped up and uh, in goals and assists, or in terms of defending, all aspects of the game. Everyone has has been uh, a key member, and um, you know, it just says a lot. And it uh, is well deserved that everyone has, uh, you know, uh, got the taste of. Uh, taste of you know individual awards like that and uh, that just sums up a good team perfect well done Tanner love it mate Sander Berger April's player of the month uh, 50 appearances in all competitions this season for Sander seven goals um, when he arrived here at Bramall Lane three and a half years ago it was with a big price tag not much known about him he's a lot more experienced now he's one of those players Morgs isn't he that Sheffield United will look to build around with the Premier League in mind uh, yeah Without a shadow of a doubt, I think um, he's going to be one of them players next season that certainly the staff, but I think the supporters are going to look to and think, right, he's he's got to be a leader in that Premier League. You know, everybody said what a technical player is, what a, what what a, uh, a thinking type of midfield player. So he'll get a chance to do that in the Premier League. You know, in in the Premier League sometimes you'll you'll get more time on the ball than you do in the Championship, but in the Premier League. It then tests when you have got that time on the ball. How how good are you, you know? And and people will set traps for him. People will be aware of him, you know. So not not to heap too much pressure on his shoulders, but certainly he will next season. I think for us, he'll have to be a, a pivotal part of that starting eleven. This is the the next step up, natural progression for Sander. Is is it not, Ellie? You know, he's an established Nor- Norwegian international. Um, he. He rightfully earns a lot of plaudits in the Championship. He was one of the success stories uh, when we are in the Premier League. But this is the stage now he's got to step up on if he's going to take his career to the next level. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you mentioned him obviously being in the Premier League previously. But since then, he's obviously got a lot of games under his belt and, and proven that everybody's expectations are, are there of him. You know, he's, kind of, he's been one of those players that you always just think he's got a second gear or another level to it. And I think as the season's gone on, you've seen like glimpses of that, but the potential's definitely there and it's now for him to take that opportunity in the Premier League. But as Morg says, I'm sure that, you know, the team will very much like be 
surrounding him and his role and he's got that physical presence as well so I think the football the style of football that he might be coming up against in the Premier League might suit him and give him a little bit of a different role because championship and Premier League is different you know it's, a, it's more sort of ratty and aggressive and less time on the ball things like that so when you get certain players particularly in the middle of the park that have more time to do what they want to do with the ball I think that might suit him quite well so it's, it's for him to take the opportunity now Okay well we need to give you a little bit more time to take your position in the commentary box ahead of today's game but before you go we're not going to let you get away scot-free we need to know your thoughts on how this is going to pan out today Do you know I was thinking a draw at one point but I'm actually <laughs> going to be I'm going to go with a 2-0 Blades win end on a high 91 points for the season Yeah that's not going to please Chris. <laughs> <laughs> um, for the time being, thank you very much, you. Ellie. Let's catch up with the manager, Paul Heckingbottom, because it has been a hectic few weeks. Nine games played in the last five weeks for Sheffield United. And when we spoke to him in the build-up to today's game, he was reflecting on a job well done. I'm quite pleased that that hectic period is coming to an end. We've achieved what we wanted, which is a promotion. But we've actually, we're still in that thick period where we had eight games in April and then we're catching up with the other games as well in, in May. So we've been two games a week now for, well, since the international break, virtually all season. So yeah, that, that's that other reason as well. So we've, uh, we've done extremely well to, to win all those games we did. What kind of do you want to see from this group of players at St Andrews? We just want to sign off the season well. Not, there's nothing on it, but we just want to perform. Um, that's it, we want to perform. Um, like I said, my mind is already on, on next season in terms of trying to get things done now and and, uh, and the job that that entails but it doesn't mean we're taking anything away from how we prepare for these games We've uh, the players are playing for yeah, to win um, we're, we're playing to get as many points as we can, get as many wins as we can and uh, yes yeah, so no, there'll be nothing different These are live shots from St Andrews, the venue for the championship season finale for the Blades, Birmingham City providing the opposition. And a reminder, of course, that you can see all the action with us here on SUTV Live. All you need to do is go to the club website, sufc.co.uk, and you'll find all the information you need right there to purchase your match day pass and enjoy the entertainment with us. Chris Morgan is still alongside me as we await the arrival of the players at St Andrews onto the pitch. Um, back in the day when your team won promotion to the Premier League, you did it with, I think, at least three games to spare. Um, how did you then motivate yourselves for the final three games? I think it was just chasing them points, you know, wanting to get as many points as, as, as we could. Um, and, and also, you go back to that professional bit, and I think we'd, we'd got teams that were still going for, for, for the playoffs. I remember we beat Ian Dowie's Crystal Palace uh, team here um, and I can't remember whether they actually got in the playoffs or just missed out and, and, and we beat them at home so I just think it's it is a you, you do you do step back off it you know and, and I think I'd be a liar if, if you said you don't because mm. you have you know all season you've been going at it hammer and tong and it, it to get promoted out of any league it, it's tough you know and once you've done it you do relax a little bit, but then I, th I sometimes think then that makes you a little bit more dangerous because certainly your flair well, we players saw that in the team. against Preston, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. The flair players in the team they then relax a little bit more, and if they're good players anyway, mm. which they show they are, and then they're relaxed, they, you know, they they, they go on to another level. But um, yeah, I think certainly for us it was just you know go and win the next game, go and get them other three points, and finish the season as with as many as you can. And we've already spoken about the fans, those that have made the trip down to Birmingham this afternoon they burned this right to to celebrate congratulate the players you know that those December um, dark day trips down to the capital cold trips to East Anglia that, well th this is the moment you support your team for isn't it so you can enjoy these occasions yeah because they'll that, have been nervous as well you know they, we, we've been up towards the top of the league and then it's you know everybody's are we going to have a little bit of a blip and middles we're going to catch us are we going to fall so they, it's not only the players that are uh, under stress the, the supporters are under stress <laughs> you know you, you, you see some of the supporters you know they're, they're going on with never mind the no fingernails like no fingers left you know, well, and, and with that in mind Hecky's done well to, to keep his hair fairly dark hasn't he over the course of the last 18 <laughs> months because the situation he came into and um, what he's had to, to deal with to then still produce the results and get this team to the position we're, we're in now. Great credit to him, Stuart McCall, Jack Lester and Kyle. I think they've done brilliant, you know, particularly off, um, off the defeat at Forest as well last season, you know, in the playoffs. Mm. 
because that that's tough, you know, and you've you've got to get back in it, and it and it does. It starts pre-season, you know, and you've got to get back in. Positive mindset. All the building blocks are there, you know. Obviously, a couple of changes in personnel. He, he'll have thought at the end of last season, right? What didn't I have? So he's he's, he's added a few new pieces to the jigsaw and and this season you know he's, he's he's got the job done so full full credit to Eki, full credit to the staff you know the players everybody involved because it's a fantastic achievement for the football how team. much credit do they deserve you mentioned the new pieces coming in they they didn't throw the tommy doyles and james mcatees straight into the starting 11 it, it was a gradual process they integrated them into the team and when then when they needed them most and you had injuries and so forth it was a natural progression and the team actually seemed to get better. Yeah, I mean, it, I, I think I covered the game for SUTV, the one away at Luton. And I think there were a lot of eyebrows raised when he started Maka and, and, and brought him off. And many people thought, oh, that, that could have been his Sheffield United career sort of finished. He's, he started a young lad, it's not gone for him, got booked, could have, could have got sent off and he's, he's dragged him off. You know, but I just think that 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 then's man management is obviously sat with him. He's gone through you know the process. Why I brought you off to protect you? Don't worry, you you are going to be a, p a pivotal part of this team. And, uh, and again, credit credit to because that's not just Paul on its own. That's that's the other staff as well. And, and credit to James McAtee for yeah, being yeah. able to show the maturity at such a young age. Not to, not forget he was 19 when he arrived mm. to take that on board and develop as a player on the pitch. A reminder, of course, as we await for the arrival of the players onto the pitch at St Andrews, you can watch every kick this afternoon with us here on SUTV Live. You can see at the bottom of your screen there, just go to the club website, sufc.co.uk. You will find all the details you need in order to purchase your match pass. Final thoughts then, Chris Morgan, as we see players coming out of the tunnel. What's Paul Heckingbottom saying to the players as he's saying, Go out there and finish with a win, or is he saying go out there and enjoy it with a win? A, a mix, yeah, a, a mix of both of that. Go out and enjoy it. You know, you've you've, you've put the hard work in this season. You've, you've achieved what you've achieved, but you know we've got we've got how many thousand fans have travelled down the motorway today. So go out there, enjoy the game, be professional, and get the three points. Ellie's drinking the Kool Aid with me. She's gone for a Blades win. Where's your money? Uh, Blades win two one. And I'm also going to stick a couple of goal scorers in of Jack Robinson and Billy Sharp's 250th goal for Sheffield United. You see, that's why you get paid the big bucks. You don't go for a prediction. Exactly. You give us definitives. <laughs> OK, let's see if uh, Chris is right. Uh, Birmingham City and Sheffield United are taking to the field at St Andrews. It is the finale of the championship season. Let's see how it unfolds by handing you over to your commentary team. In a few moments, you'll hear from Ellie Wilson. But first, as always... It's your commentator, Matt Young. Thank you, Richard. The final game of a long but very memorable campaign sees Premier League bound Sheffield United end the season of a trip to St Andrews. Defeat to Huddersfield on Thursday, while well, Paul Heckingbottom will be keen to sign off with a win against the Birmingham side who secured their championship survival several weeks ago. United's travelling army will be in party mood once again, and the next time that they see their side in a league fixture come August, it will once again be as a Premier League club. But for the time being, Ellie, Sheffield United will want to sign off with a win this afternoon against a Birmingham side who will perhaps have something uh, in reserve maybe after some point news today about the uh, takeover at Birmingham City. Yeah, for sure, exciting times for them, you know, in amongst the club and, and what their future might be. So maybe another little incentive there, but you know, at the end of the day, I think both teams will want to finish their season on a high and get three points and it'll be an interesting game, I think. You mentioned it in the pre-game show. This could be the last time we see some of these Sheffield United players. Obviously, futures to be decided. So this will be some personal motivation out there for some of these guys, I'd expect. Yeah, I think, you know, as a player, you want to play every game. But especially when it is that last game of the season, you know you're just around the corner from having a bit of a break. But you also know around the corner from that group maybe not you know not being together as, as we know it for the season. So every player will want to be starting this game and want to play a part. And... Even in terms of next season, it's it's an opportunity for you to sort of show that you should still be here and, and um, put a performance on them for the badge. A bit of a, a retro feel to Sheffield United's back five this afternoon in the sense it's not been too often that you've seen the likes of stalwarts like Chris Basham, Ender Stevens, George Bolock and, and, and John Egan all playing the same side. Yeah, I know, yeah. And, you know, they've been solid. Everyone's played their part at various moments.